Good morning and welcome to the Cathedral of the Most Blessed Sacrament. All your music can be found in your worship programs. Please join in our opening hymn, Grant Them Eternal Rest, O Lord.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Every time the Holy Spirit gathers together the people of Christ for the sacred mysteries, we offer this sacrifice for both the living and the dead. And today it is our special duty, our office, to offer this suffrage for the eternal repose of the soul of Pope Benedict. Let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, immortal shepherd of souls, look on your people's prayers and grant that your servant, Pope Benedict, who presided over your church in charity, may with the flock entrusted to his care receive from you your mercy the reward of faithful of a faithful steward through our lord jesus christ your son 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Maccabees. Judas, the ruler of Israel, took up a collection among all his soldiers, amounting to 2,000 silver drachmas, which he sent to Jerusalem to provide for an expiatory sacrifice. In doing this, he acted in a very excellent and noble way, inasmuch as he had the resurrection of the dead in view. For if he were not expecting the fallen to rise again. It would have been useless and foolish to pray for them in death. But if he did this with a view to the splendid reward that awaits those who had gone to rest in godliness, it was a holy and pious thought. Thus he made atonement for the dead, that they might be freed from this sin. The word of the Lord. Thanks. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? He did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all. Will he not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? 
It is God who acquits us. Who will condemn us? It is Christ Jesus who died, rather was raised, who also is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. What will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or the sword? No, in all these things, we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor present things nor future things, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and I will not reject anyone who comes to me. Because I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of the one who sent me. And this is the will of the one who sent me, that I should not lose anything of what he gave me, but that I should raise it on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have eternal life, and I shall raise him on the last day. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be Jesus Christ. It is a great grace that we have been brought here together by the Holy Spirit to offer the Eucharistic sacrifice for the eternal rest of our Holy Father, Pope Benedict. To do such with solemnity is appropriate here in our cathedral church. And on behalf of each of you, 
I want to thank all of you for the ways that each of us enriches the prayer of the other. Observing the solemnities of a funeral is a sort of duty which we owe to the deceased, a duty owed both by nature and by grace. At the passing of someone out of our life into eternal, the, the dimension of eternal life, it is right that we both pay tribute and say our own farewell. And in the days since the death of Pope Benedict, there's been a great deal of that, paying tribute and saying farewell. Paying tribute, especially for the many ways he used his gifts uh, to build up the church as a priest, a scholar, a cardinal, and finally, the vicar of Peter. Today, I think we might very appropriately concentrate all of our attention on the discharge of the duty that we owe to the late Holy Father in the order of grace. We here gathered commend him into the loving embrace of our Heavenly Father. As we might put it, we're here to continue to pray him home and especially to do that within the offering of the Holy Sacrifice of the Eucharist. To pray Pope Benedict home by offering, along with the body and blood of Christ, his life, all of his good works, a lifetime of service. And imagine then we understand how profoundly transformed his self-offering is as we join it to the offering of Christ. But we pray Pope Benedict home also by pleading for mercy within the context of the Eucharist. We present the atoning precious blood of Jesus to the Father and we ask the Father to immerse our late Holy Father in that mercy for whatever may have been a mar or a wound in his discipleship. Each of us then has a particular task to perform as we participate in the Eucharistic sacrifice today. It is, I hope, some help for what I am about to do, which is to tell you about my own particular sense of praying the Holy Father home. The profile that I have very much of him as I come into the cathedral today and lead you in the holy sacrifice in suffrage for his eternal reward is the profile of him not so much as a priest, a theologian, a hierarch, but the profile, the dimension of his life is simply as a disciple alongside of us, other disciples. And I think he would appreciate that given his great love for St. Augustine, who so famously said, what I am for you, Augustine wrote, causes me concern, but what I am with you, a disciple of Christ, gives me consolation. And I think the scriptures we have heard today help us understand the Holy Father, the late Holy Father, as a disciple whom we present to God the Father and for whom we ask mercy from God the Father. The scripture helps us understand the good works of virtue that are part of our offering and what might be failures in his virtue that we, for which we beg mercy. Faith. The faith that we sang about in the psalm response. I shall see 
the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. The faith that is so profoundly expressed by Job as a prophet when he said, as for me that I know my vindicator lives and that he will at last stand forth upon the dust and from my flesh I will see God. I will see for myself with my own eyes, not another's, and there will behold him. This faith, this realistic, this profoundly concrete faith was the faith of this disciple of Jesus Christ, Joseph Ratzinger, Pope Benedict. And we present, along with the body of Christ, this confession of faith. And we ask the Lord to be merciful to him in that in virtue of his confession, his profession of belief in the resurrection, that his profession not be in vain and that Pope Benedict be purged of whatever might have remained a wound or a weakness in his faith as he passed out of this world. And at the heart of Joseph Ratzinger, Benedict's XVI's discipleship was hope. His trust that he was owned by Jesus Christ and given to Jesus as a gift from the Father, and therefore not ever one to be lost, but to be raised up by Jesus on the last day, as we heard Jesus predict and promise so eloquently in the gospel. That was the trust that motivated all of the life of Joseph Ratzinger, Pope Benedict. And we present, along with the body of Christ in this Eucharistic sacrifice today, Pope Benedict's entrustment of himself. We are, in some sense, echoing the Pope's confident hope, confident that he will be heard. And along with that, of course, we beg for mercy for him, that today, Pope Benedict enjoy the eternal life that comes with belonging to the Son, that in God's mercy, Pope Benedict be purged of whatever remained wounded or weak in his hope, as he passed out of this world. And we make an offering of the love in the heart of Joseph Ratzinger, Pope Benedict. At the heart of his discipleship was the embrace of the invincible love of Christ crucified, as we heard it spoken about so eloquently in the second reading in the epistle from the letter to the Romans. Pope Benedict could and did say, along with St. Paul, I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, nor heights, nor depths, nor any other creature. It's a long list in Pope, in St. Paul's le uh, re le uh, letter but an eloquent list. None of these things, no other creature, will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. We know that when he passed out of this world, it was this bond of love that held the Holy Father's faith and hope. Not his career, not his accomplishments, but in the end, this plain and simple and profound friendship with Jesus Christ. And so in this Eucharist, along with the presenting the body of Christ to the Father, we present Pope Benedict's loving embrace of Jesus, his clinging to Jesus, confident that this will make him pleasing along with Jesus in the sight of the Father. And we beg the Father's mercy on Pope Benedict, that he be purged of whatever was wounded or weak in his love, 
so that this day in paradise, he will enjoy the full embrace that belongs between a lover and a beloved. In choosing to focus my preaching today on the Pope's, the late Pope's identity along with us as simply a disciple of Jesus, I took my direction from the concluding words of his own spiritual testament written some few years ago. Pope Benedict wrote, finally, I humbly ask, pray for me, so that the Lord, despite all my sins and insufficiencies, welcome me into the eternal dwellings. Let us then, as we go forward, keep that admonition in mind, and make it then our joyful duty to respond to the request of our Holy Father who served us so generously. And in our own response, devoutly pray for his eternal rest. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord. May he rest in peace. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. God, the Almighty Father, raised Christ, his Son, from the dead. With confidence, we ask our Father to save all his people, living and dead. We pray for the Church, for Pope Francis, Archbishop Vigneron, our bishops, and all of the faithful, that we may always embrace the cross of Christ in our everyday lives in order to participate in the work of salvation of souls. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray in gratitude for the life and example of Pope Benedict XVI. May he know eternal happiness in heaven with Jesus and the saints, and may he continue to pray for the church he loves. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for vocations to the priesthood for the Archdiocese of Detroit, May those who the Lord is preparing to follow him be granted the grace of courage and joy and gratefully accept their mission in life. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray that through a greater participation in the National Eucharist Revival, each may come to a deeper understanding of the worship of God through the holy sacrifice of the Mass and adoration of the most blessed sacrament. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for the Archdiocese of Detroit, especially our priests, deacons, religious, parishes, and schools who are working toward a greater collaboration as families of parishes. May the Holy Spirit guide all into the peace and joy of unity as together we work to truly unleash the gospel in Southeast Michigan. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray for all who are suffering from physical or mental illness, from homelessness or isolation. May they receive the assistance they need 
to know that they are loved by God and by all who share the gospel in charity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. O oh God, from whom the just receive an unfailing reward, grant that your servant, Pope Benedict, whom you made vicar of Peter and shepherd of your church, may rejoice forever in the vision of your glory, for he was a faithful steward here on earth of the mysteries of your forgiveness and grace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and all his holy church. We pray, O Lord, that through these devoted offices of supplication, you may mercifully bestow a blessed reward on the soul of your servant, Pope Benedict, and on us, your gifts of grace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O oh Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We follow your path, O Lord, and bless your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain the inheritance of your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, the spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Anne, Blessed Solanus Casey, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Ellen, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant, Pope Benedict, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this Forgive those who 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God and the glory Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
please stand as we sing the Marian anthem from Almaradim Taurus. Let us pray. As we come to the table of your eternal banquet, we humbly beg your mercy, Lord, for the soul of your departed servant, Pope Benedict, that he may rejoice at last in possession of the truth in which he faithfully confirmed your people through Christ our Lord. Amen. And together, let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord of the harvest, call forth vocations to the priesthood from our archdiocese and families. Jesus, eternal high priest, give us men willing to sacrifice and serve. Make their hearts after your own sacred heart. Holy Spirit, everlasting love between the Father and Son, strengthen, inspire, and set men on fire with divine charity. Grant them the courage to say yes to their vocation. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Mother of Priests, comfort and protect your sons as they discern their call. With Saint Joseph, may they know your love and companionship as they deepen their relationship with Jesus. Immaculate Heart of Mary, Saint Anne, Saint John Vianney, patron saint of priests. The Lord be with you. And your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May the God of all consolation bless you, for in his unfathomable goodness he created the human race, and in the resurrection of his only begotten Son, he has given believers the hope of rising again. To us who are alive, may God grant pardon for our sins, and to all the dead, a place of light and peace. And may we all live happily forever with Christ, whom we believe truly rose from the dead. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace.